All right, this is uh, James from Reserva here. Um, we're going to cover how to do the ultimate barbershop setup uh, for your Reserva account. So I'll go through the basic setup uh, to start off, and then we'll cover some more advanced features like uh, guest barbers, uh, how the wait lists work, uh, private bookings for either busy barbers or shop owners, and a few other really cool features that we have uh, within the system. So let's get to it and we're going to create an account. So uh, I got my basic info in here. Uh, my name, uh, the name of the shop, which is uh, Parkdale Barbershop, and that becomes your uh, reserva URL. So this, in this case, it'll become parkdalebarbershop.reserva.com. Uh, my email address and my password. So I'm just going to click on click your account. And okay, so we're going to get started here. So first thing I'm going to do is type in my city so that I can get uh, oriented with a, uh, a time zone. And I'm also going to pick uh, how I want my time slots to be arranged. Generally, you should pick uh, time slots that are based on your prime service. So in my case, I'm going to be offering 30 minute haircuts at my shop and all my other services are going to be variants of that time. Um, they may be like 45 minutes or 15 minutes, but uh, I'll show you how you can account for those because with our schedule, uh, you can fall on and off the grid. And I'm going to start my weeks on Mondays because, hey, that's what I'm going to choose this time. So I'm going to go to the next step. Um, here I'm going to get a uh, real... Uh, into business here and I'm going to set up my services. So uh, let's see here, we're going to offer a haircut. That's going to be a 30 minute service. Uh, we'll make that one $25. Um, going to hit save. Um, we're going to do a shave. In my case, it's going to be a one hour service and we're going to charge 50 bucks for that. And we're also going to do a combo service here with a haircut and shave. And we're going to make that a one hour and 30 minute service. And we're going to go $75 for that one. Um, so once we get everything set up in there, um, we got some of our basic services. Uh, after this, we're going to set up our providers. Um, so we're going to go with some all-stars at our shop. So we've got the legendary Ian Mackay. He's going to be our prime barber. Um, we're going to have Des Kadena because he's a rad dude. Um, we're going to have uh, Kathleen Hanna um, working at our shop as well. And our young apprentice is going to be Ben Dusso because he's a rad guy. And an amazing drummer, and he drummed for wicked bands like Throwdown and Madball. And anyways, that's enough about Ben. But uh, so yeah, he'll be our apprentice, and I think everyone else is just going to be uh, our regular barbers. So I'm going to show you how to manage uh, an apprentice versus regular barbers after we get the initial setup done. So I'll click continue here. Um, okay, so we're going to have our hours of operation. I think we're just going to be a six day a week shop because we'll take Sundays off because no one wants to work on Sundays. Um, we'll be, we'll make Fridays uh, go a little later. We'll be open till eight and uh, we'll make Saturdays early days too and we're going to set our start time at 8 there as well and what I can do is um, I'll make uh, Ian uh, work Tuesday through uh, Saturday and actually you know what let's make Saturday only 8 hours because hey who wants to work 10 hours on a Saturday um, okay so Ian's working Tuesday through Saturday. We'll make Des uh, a Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, we'll make uh, Kathleen work Tuesday through uh, Saturday. And the apprentice 
10 is only going to work Monday through Friday. Um, at any rates, we could uh, make uh, any of the barbers work less time if we want. So maybe Ben has to go somewhere um, on Friday nights and he can only work till 5 p.m. So we're going to make him end at 5 on Fridays, um, which is three hours earlier than what the shop cl uh, closes. Um, we can also manage breaks for everybody as well, and we can get to that after we do this initial setup. So uh, I'll hit continue here and more or less I'm ready to go. It's a pretty quick setup to get all the basics going. So I'm just going to turn myself online. Um, I'm going to add my address. So we'll just make our phone number 416-555-5555. Uh, uh, that's a real number. Just kidding. Um, address will be 1234 Queen street we're in toronto and our postal code will be m6 j uh, o b or m6 j uh i don't know one a one and okay so everything's there and we'll be good to go um as you notice we have multi-location and uh Multi location support in Reserva. So if I go back to location information, I can add another location here. Um, and that would allow me to manage if I had two barbershops, both locations. Um, but yeah, as you can see, uh, all the basics are there. Like um, everyone's schedule is good to go. So right now we're looking at today, Thursday. Um, it's showing the availabilities for everyone, but really we should be looking at Friday. And as you can see, like very quickly, you could just uh, start entering people in there. So if I put in haircut, um, we're going to have Jimmy Dean come in. And again, his phone number is going to be 416-555-5555. Uh, and I will request booking. And he'll be good to go. And the cool thing here is he's actually becomes a client in the client list. So he has one booking. Um, and if you ever want to look at uh, what your clients would see while you're doing the setup, um, a really easy way to do that is to open an incognito window. Um, so in Chrome, it's just file, incognito, um, or you could use another browser like Safari. So again, um, if I want to go to parkdalebarbershop.reserva.com, I can see that here. Um, so I got the basics going and then if I also want to copy that myself um, and check it out in Chrome in an incognito window, I can go here and you can see the basics. So um, setup's pretty plain Jane. Um, I guess next I'm going to add some imagery to this. So um, you can do that under settings, logo and branding. Um, if I want to add in the header image, I just click on here, I go to desktop. Uh, I did a plain Jane uh, Parkdale Barbershop logo, so I'm just going to add that in and, uh, you know, uh, we'll make a tagline, uh, whatever, you know, uh, uh, come get a cut, come get cut, there you go. Um, so that's there, and as you can see, if I hit reload here, uh, the image shows up, it starts to make it a little more interesting. Um, we can also add some images for all the brow, uh, all of the uh, uh, barbers as well. So if I go to manage and then providers, um, you'll notice like the three dots next to everybody's names. Those are pretty powerful features there. Um, you can change a lot of information uh, about people. You know, if you go into settings here, you can uh, set their bio. So you know, uh, we'll make it like I used. I used to sing in bands and now I cut hair. And um, also too, like if you have a start date for a new barber, um, you can actually set, uh, you can set a first booking date, or sorry, these are the, the booking windows for the, the barber. So if you don't want people to be able to book same day, um, you're able to set that window. Um, that's a really good feature to have if you're taking, uh, moving from uh, walk-ins to appointment-based uh, uh, setup um, and again I can show you how you can do that for the shop as a whole in a little bit but right now I'm just gonna add images for everybody so um, I'm gonna add 
uh, an image here for uh, Ian Mackay. So we got his nice image here. Generally, these should always be square images. Uh, you know, I would say like 200 pixels by 200 pixels or 300 by 300 is a really good size to work with. Um, and it'll give you room, like if we ever make changes in the interface design, the images will scale up real nice. So I'm just going to add his image in there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for Des as well. And uh, let's see here. We got Des's image. Now the song Lou Louie is stuck in my head. Uh, and we're going to go to Kathleen Hanna. And we're going to add her image in. So here we go. There's Kathleen. And then uh, last but not least is uh, Ben. I might just make him identifiable as an apprentice. And um, I'll just uh, add his image in there as well. And here we go. There's Ben's image. OK, so now um, things should look pretty nice here. So if I go in here, um, I click on haircut, I click on Friday, I'll see everybody's image. So it's pretty easily identifiable for each barber that works at your shop. Um, yeah, it just adds a bit of visual punch. You can also add images for the services as well. Um, that, that's a feature that we also offer too. So you could have you know, a nice close shot of someone's head getting cut for the haircut you know, the nice shave shot and then uh, some kind of combo shot, 45 degree angle, one side being shave, one side being uh, haircut, whatever you want to do. Um, I can show you on the customer end real quick, just like what the booking experience is like. So again, uh, haircut and shave um, is what I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose it on Friday. I'm going to pick Ian. I'm going to pick my time. I'm going to click continue. And then here I have options to either log in with my uh, Google Plus account or I'm able to uh, create a reserve account here, which I can uh, click on this, this link here or I can sign in with my reserve account. So if I click here, I would have my email and password and that's what I would use to log in. Um, yeah, so it keeps, keeps things pretty simple. Three login options for your clients. You can turn off logins if you want. Uh, I generally don't suggest it just because uh, it, it just makes people a little less reliable. Um, it also helps, it also can raise your no-show rate. Um, generally, if you've got an email that's been activated or a social account, uh, people will be more honorable with showing up to their appointments and your uh, no-show rates will be nice and low. Um, but then again, there's also ways to address that by either pre-charging for services uh, or you can um, you can also uh, just block people if they no show you. And again, something I can show you uh, how, how you can do that as well. So um, we'll just go back to the admin area here. Um, just in terms of settings, uh, fine tuning things, there's a lot to cover. Um, I'll go through the general settings first. Um, again, you can see like uh, we're able to offer French and English support for the uh, front end booking widget. Um, you know, here's the company name. This is what will appear in all your confirmation emails. Uh, our currency is Canadian dollars because we're based in Canada. First booking date. This is a really great feature. So if you have a new shop that's opening on a certain date, you can use the fixed date option. Um, so to just activate this, I'm going to make first booking date as active. And let's just say like, hmm. You know, we're not going to be opening this barber shop until Monday the 21st. And we'll also make that the first booking date in the tab in the schedule. So I'll click save here. And uh, if I just go back here, uh, reload my reserve account, I go to new bookings. And um, I'm just going to set this up again. So let's see here. I'm going to pick a haircut, um, as you can see we're closed until the 21st because that's when our grand opening is for our, our faith barbershop here. Um, so it's a pretty great feature, first booking date. Um, you can also make it a variable time so that 
you can set it to be like people can't book same day, they can't book within the next few hours. So um, if you're a shop transitioning from walk-ins to appointments, this is a really good way to uh, manage that transition to make sure that people don't line jump. You know, sometimes you might have a few people waiting in line and you haven't entered everybody into Reserva uh, and somebody might snag a spot 10 minutes before their time, show up thinking they've got a spot and then realize, oh, there's already three people waiting here. Um, so this is just a really good way to just help you enforce the rules and uh, also make sure that uh, nobody line jumps in case there are people waiting and they haven't been entered into the, your reserve schedule yet. Uh, likewise, the last booking date can either be a fixed date or a variable date. If you set it to variable date, you have the ability to choose up to eight weeks from now. Um, this is a great way to uh, manage uh, vacation time and uh, for your staff at the shop. Um, I generally recommend like three or four weeks uh, advanced booking. This gives you enough time to like uh, to account for a week week long or a few day vacation that some of your staff might be taking. Um, and this way, you don't have to cancel bookings for people. You know, if you set like a five week notification window from your staff for giving you a, uh, you know uh, uh, giving you vacation times that they want to take, uh, this is a really good way to to manage that and not have to cancel appointments um, from your clients. Um, on the service end of things, uh, a lot of great little features here. Uh, I'm going to be able to show the, the service costs in the booking form. Um, I want to keep uh, service durations in the booking forms. We have group service management, which is amazing. Um, this way you could, say, offer classes um, at your shop. So if it's something you're ever interested in, you could set up like a, you know, a 10 slot class so you could do a seminar for local barbers or a night or something. Uh, it'd be a really great way to manage that. Uh, Multi-service selection, again, another great feature which allows your, your clients to book multiple services at the same time. Um, so this way a father and son could uh, get in appointments uh, back to back uh, with the same barber. So uh, I'm just going to enable the showing the service costs in the booking form. So I'll click save there. Um, on the provider tip, um, we're going to set up manage provider splits so that you can see what the split would be between uh, yourself and uh, your staff for uh, services. That's if you have, uh, you know, you're working on commissions or splits with your with your staff. Um, you know, you can turn off provider selection so. Uh, your your client or your your clients can select or customers can select no preference if you're busy they just want to get a slot and they, they don't mind who they're getting it with um, so that's something that uh, can be offered as well um, and then also too with the no preference provider selection um, you know you can you can control it by the order of which your staff are listed and generally we recommend you list your staff in order of seniority. Um, if you happen to be a shop owner, we always recommend you put yourself last because um, often the case is you don't want new clients, you want your staff to get new clients. So this is a good way for your staff to be chosen before you. And we also have a really great banger feature that um, you can use to uh, not even take any new clients on your end. Um, you can make yourself private so only people who are on your private list can book with you. Um, and that's yeah, we love that feature. A lot of our, our, our a lot of our clients love that feature too, especially like really busy shops. Um, on the bookings uh, end of things, I'm just gonna hit save here. Uh, you can all the all the uh, sort of like uh, nitty gritty booking uh, uh, interface features are managed here. So we're, we're gonna keep force clients to log in when booking. So this requires them to create an account either with Reserva or log in with Facebook or Google Plus. I'm gonna turn on this feature so in case someone forgets to uh, force an email reminder for themselves or to, to check off an email reminder, um, this will always ensure that they get that email reminder. Um, you know, force clients to select a provider Eh, you know, whatever. They can click on the no preference button if they don't know who they want to book with. Um, we have like pending pending appointments. So um, in this case, if you were to click this off, um, you would have to approve the appointment before the, the person got their confirmation email. 
Um, by default, uh, all admins get uh, booking notifications sent to them. Um, I'm going to limit our, our clients to book no more than three bookings per day. Um, we're also going to show the next available opening. So again, if you're a busy shop and someone just wants to get in, this is a great way to show the next few spots that are available at your shop, even if they're a few days out. Um, and then we can add a message to the top of the next openings list. Um, not really necessary, but you know, you can put something in there like, uh, snag a spot, you know, this is a, this is your opportunity to snag a last minute spot. Um, check here or something like that. Um, the show no preference bookings, this, if I enable this um, on the admin end of things, I will see uh, in the schedule page, I will see uh, a nice little NP drop or show up on the top right hand corner of an appointment. And that indicates that someone hasn't chosen anybody and that booking was assigned to either randomly to that person or if you use the ordering uh, the first available person at that time uh, in your provider's list. And uh, waiver agreement, that's something that's pretty cool. Uh, you can just enforce your waiver policy. So you can say like, hey, we require 24 hour cancellation notice. So if you turn that on, everybody will have to click that they agree to that. Uh, and then uh, the last but not least on this page, um, including address uh, for uh, booking notifications, which I think is a good feature to add, especially if you're either moving um, or just recently opened and it's just a really easy way to include your address in every confirmation email that your clients receive for their uh, appointments. Um, here's an option to make the no preference button the first option when booking. You know, if, if you have pretty set clientele, you don't really care about this. And a uh, new, new little feature we just dropped is showing indicators for notes, new clients, uh, and client group in the schedule. So the indicators will show up uh, to the left of their name. And uh, what they'll show is a star for first time booking. Um, a little like a, uh, a circle with a cross in it indicates that that client has no shows. Um, a little envelope indicates that that client has notes wrote, written beside them. And, um, and then also too, if you click on the appointment, you can actually see the uh, information for, uh, or you can actually see what uh, client group that that uh, uh, customer is assigned to because we have the ability to create groups which allows you to uh, just like uh, streamline the process, also offer like set discounts to certain clients like VIP list. Um, or just like uh, my old dudes list or my old dudettes list or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we can get to that in a bit though. So I'm just going to click save, update all my settings here. Uh, conversion tracking. Hey, if you're into Google Analytics, this is a great way to track uh, where people are coming to your uh, booking where you're from. So, you know, if you're ever doing uh, Facebook or, or Google promotion, um, this is a great way to show you where people are coming from and what your conversion rate is uh, based on people either coming in from organic search, paid search, uh, Facebook ads, um, or, or any of your social accounts. Uh, payments, this is a really uh, rad feature. I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but we got a lot of really cool banger features in Reserva that we're really proud of. But uh, this, this feature lets you uh, connect your account to Stripe so that you can accept payments from uh, your clients. It's, uh, it can be used to either uh, accept optional payments, force everyone to pay, and it can also be used when people are blocked so that they have to, um, they have to pay for the missed appointment and the next appointment if they want to become unblocked. So I'm going to keep it disabled for now because um, a lot of our shops still do operate without um, cards, but the transition is happening pretty quick. And uh, we are adding a couple really great features to this area, uh, card hold being one of them uh, coming up in the next month or so, along with um, the ability to automatically charge for no call, no shows uh, and uh, cancellations that occur within the cancellation window as a result of having a tokenized card. Um, it'll also allow you to buy, uh, bypass certain clients from having to go through uh, prepayment as well. Um, and that's, that's kind of like a reward for people who've 
uh, being with you for a long time. But, you know, I would stress be modular, treat everyone the same. Uh, you know, you're in, you're in business and you don't want to cut corners because if you do uh, or break your rules, um, you know, they are likely to be abused at some point. So the more consistent you are with your approach, the less, the less opportunity there is for the rules to be broken. Um, so after this, we've got private booking. This would uh, force people to log in at the beginning. Um, we don't generally recommend you turn this on. Um, you know, you can get really restrictive to it so that there's no new users. Um, you, you don't allow any social logins. And uh, there's also an opportunity to view the full schedule. Um, not really applicable in a barbershop setting, but hey, if you want to go private, by all means, you can click this button if you'd like. Uh, on the client end of things, uh, you know, we can enable client notes. So you can write notes about your clients. Just be like, hey, Jimmy likes, uh, you know, he loves his uh, duck's ass. Or, uh, you know, we got uh, Bobby who, who loves his uh, zero all over. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, whatever you want to write about these guys uh, or your clients, um, you know, by all means, put, put in there what you want to put in. Um, invoicing. Again, if you want to do some invoicing in Reserva, we have a really simple uh, invoicing module. Uh, not really something you, you need to worry about here. Um, and then the detailed client information. This will force your, your clients to write in their address um, with every booking. And again, it's I think it's a little overkill in most cases. But uh, if it is something you want to have on, your, on file for your clients, um, you can actually uh, have them uh, fill this out every time they make an appointment with you. So uh, I'm just going to click save here because I have enabled client notes. And last but not least, um, just the time setting. So we can actually get uh, really uh, granular with some of our uh, durations of our services, which allows you to fall off the grid. Um, and this is a great way to manage uh, just to manage like services that um, don't necessarily conform to your uh, uh, multiples uh, that you set up based on your prime service. So you know, again, I, I will I will push clients to be a little more modular. Um, there, there, you can get too granular in the way that you manage your time. You know, twenty five minute haircut, thirty five minute beard trim, and cut. Uh, you know that those are those will make times difficult for your clients to book in because they'll be booking at off times throughout the day. Um, try to stay away from it, but I, I also recognize that it is something that um, some people really want to get uh, uh, like very detailed in the way that they manage their time, and this is this allows you to go as as granular as you want with your time management. So those are all the settings there. I'm gonna click save. Um, we can uh, cover, now that we've covered that, um, we've already gone through logo and branding, we've gone through the location information, uh, admin accounts. Um, I guess we might as well just set up a new admin here. So uh, I'm gonna set up a new one using the Parkdale, uh, Park, Parkdale Hair Academy email that I've set up. Um, and we'll make this uh, an account for Ian um, because he needs to log in. So pretend I'm, I'm writing Ian, Ian's email here. Um, in this case, he whatever his email is. Um, so I'll make this, uh, I'll type it all in here. I can choose to send him an invitation email. And what this will do is it'll allow him to log in uh, and he'll be able to, uh, He'll be able to um, set up his uh, his login access either through the iOS app or he can check the the mobile the mobile view on his phone. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, an admin account for Ian the barber. So uh, I'll create that now. So I've created his account. Um, I can put all his info in here if I want, but generally it's not needed. I can also edit his password for him. Um, permissions is a great feature because it allows you to get quite restrictive with what barbers access. Generally, uh, I recommend that you limit their access to um, just their own schedule. Um, it just keeps things easier um, and more streamlined for them. 
Um, again, if they're a shop manager, then they can see everyone's schedule. But you know, for a smaller shop like the one I've set up, I don't think it's really necessary. Um, we do have options here where, uh, based on limited access, um, this admin account can can do provider management, so they can um, you know turn days on and off, um, modify their schedule. Um, we can disable tap on tap off on the schedule disable daily totals and limit access to client information so they don't see the contact. Um, I'm, I'm just going to hit save here and then uh, I'm going to go down to uh, connected providers. Um, I'm going to set him up to receive an email for every booking that's sent to him uh, and I'm also going to limit his schedule to connected providers and his connected provider is going to be Ian. Um, likewise, if I was to set up an, a login for Des um, or Kathleen or Ben, if I only want them to see their own schedule, then uh, I click off the corresponding provider for each admin account. Um, I also recommend that you also set up uh, 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 an admin account for the front desk, um, and you can just call it like uh, uh, you can just call it front desk uh, for the first and last name, and this is a great way. Um, for you to just make sure like if if there is somebody working at the front desk or people are sharing it It just helps with accountability because we do track which admin account makes or, or modifies an appointment um, And it, it is a good way for you to just check in and see like if there is an issue or something creeps up uh, You can kind of see like where where and when that happened and who was who was doing whatever to either cause that issue or made a change um, you know, on, on the client's behalf. So I will, I'll just use again the Park, Parkdale Hair Academy plus front desk. Uh, this is just an easy filtering uh, option that Gmail offer, offers. And uh, again, I would probably just be like, this would either be like front desk at, you know, parkdalebarbershop.com if I had that as my email address. Uh, or as my domain for for the the, the website uh, for um, for for the business, but in this case, I'm just um, adding the filter uh, to the end of the uh, the email the Gmail email address. So I'll click create account here, and I'm just going to make this one uh, just full full access. I'm not even going to go ahead and um, just like uh, I'm not even going to go ahead and. Uh, receive emails for it because they're not really needed. You just need this account to be able to log in and see everything uh, on, on your reserve account. Um, other than that, we're going to just get back to the schedule here. And you can see here, um, we also have gone back to August 21st because that's our opening date. So you can see Des and Ben are working that day. And, you know, again, I can do a haircut. And if I search clients, uh, what did, did I make that guy's Jack? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, let's let's just make in. Uh, uh, let's make up a client here. So we're gonna make uh, Jack Dean as our client, and I'm gonna request the booking, and uh, I'm also gonna create a, a booking for uh, Susan Edwards. Her phone number is going to be 416-555-5467. Uh, I'm going to request that booking, and that's going to be done. Uh, and then we can also make a booking with Ben here as well. So generally, the, this will be controlled by the clients, but as, you, you, as you're starting to enter um, maybe existing appointments in from your current system, um, this is a way to do that. Uh, I would also recommend if you are transitioning from a, a system, pick a date um, where you have a lot of fallout or drop off. Sorry, for your uh, for for the amount of clients that um, are making bookings with you, because it'll just limit the amount of uh, clients you actually have to put into for future that have future appointments. Um, always hard to come up with uh, fake names, so I'm gonna call this person. Uh, Dan Jacobs and uh, we'll give Dan the Klondike 5 uh, classic number and we're going to request that booking and 
we'll just close that. Um, so if you want to see, uh, we do have a lot of information on this page. Um, you can see here uh, we have a check-in option which allows you to check in clients. So again, this will send a notification um, with a upgrade that's coming really soon to to your uh, to your barbers that their client has arrived. Um, the contact option allows you to call or email them if their email address is in there in case of an emergency. Um, you can also add the notes to here. So I could be like, uh, Dan likes, uh, likes a good haircut like anybody would. Click on add. Um, and then I can check him in. But also too, we have the ability to mark um, this person as a no-show. So here we go here. Um, you know, we can say like if it was August 21st, um, Susan did no show us, so we're gonna mark her there, and her her uh, her appointment becomes red, and um, yeah, I'm basically able to just control uh, control the the no shows right from the uh, the uh, right from the schedule page. I can also go to the client list as well, and I can see Susan Edwards. If I filter by no shows, she's the only one. Uh, with a no-show, and I could even block her because, hey, I, I'm, I'm a hard guy. You, if you no-show me once, you're out. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll, go, we'll go back to the schedule here. Um, for the 21st of August, um, as you can see, everyone's got stars now because they're all first-time customers. Um, if I were to book, let's see here, I don't know, I could just go to another day. I could go to Thursday. And you know, I can do a haircut, and our man Dan is actually going to come back for another haircut because he just loves getting his haircut. Um, so yeah, we can we can do that real quick. You know, you can go to any days, super easy, uh, really direct. Um, that's kind of how we like it with Reserva. Just make it. Uh, Make it really approachable and then as you start peeling back the layers you see there's uh, actually a lot of functionality within the system but just getting back to the uh, the window here that pops up when you click on an appointment you know you have your ability to check in you can contact the person uh, there's notes this is a killer feature where it just shows you all the notifications that were sent to the the client so you can check this if they ever say that they didn't get an email reminder or text reminder it'll show you all the notifications that are sent including waitlist openings as well which is uh, just a really cool feature um, and then uh, what else we got here uh, you can undo undo that no show because hey we were a little we, we jumped the gun and Susan was only five minutes late and she showed up for her appointment. Um, but, uh, you know, the actions here, I can actually edit the booking um, from this. I can also create a series. So this would allow me to, um, you know, say like, oh, Susan likes to get her haircut with Des every seven days. And I'm going to repeat this until, uh, you know, the 28th of December and I'll create that and I've created a whole bunch of bookings so um, every I guess every Monday um, Susan's gonna have an appointment with that oh sorry uh, every Thursday sorry uh, let's see here I'm just gonna go back here yeah, every uh, every Tuesday, sorry, no, every Monday. Ah, there you go. Whew, sweating for a minute there. Um, every Monday, uh, Susan's gonna have her appointment with Des, so that's taken care of. So standing appointments, no problem. Um, but we'll just jump back to Monday here and uh, that 21st of August. Um, we can already see we've got a few appointments in there, which is pretty cool. And again, if I just refresh this here, um, you know, now I can see that I got my pricing in. 
um, as well as the duration of the service. And if I click on a haircut, you know, we can see all the appointments that are available there. Um, you can see that Des is a little later. His first availability is 11 a.m. Um, because he does have two appointments in the morning, but um, your clients can just click on the, the show more link and they can see all av availability uh, with, um, with your providers. Uh, but if I want to just show a calendar, I can go to the 22nd. I'm going to pick Ian and I'm going to make that booking in at 1 p.m. and click continue. And then uh, I would just log in here to make that appointment um, <clears throat> and take care of things there. Uh, okay, so now we'll go back to uh, the provider list. And uh, we'll just go through some of the uh, cool features that we've got here. Um, so under settings, um, you know, I can make my default split for Ian, you know, 60%. Um, first booking date, last booking date, again, this could have, a, he could have a custom window that's different from my general window. Um, we also have the ability to hide certain admins or sorry certain providers from the uh the public so you know in some cases you might have like a guest or somebody just taking care of stuff behind the scenes that you don't don't want to have uh view viewed publicly even like a junior barber that might be just starting out that isn't quite an apprentice and you want to have people come in um, and schedule time with them so this could be a way that uh, you could manage that um, the private bookings or private clients feature is really awesome. This would allow you to go private, so um, only people on Ian's list can can book with him. I don't believe I have anybody yet who's booked, um, but we'll jump to Des and we'll do it with Des because there are bookings with Des. Um, what I'll do is I'll make Des private, um, and you know we'll make his passcode Lulu Lulu. And I'm gonna hit save. And if I go to view list, uh, I'm gonna make it really low because we want to have uh, people who book more than one time. You know, generally, like you could make it five times or twelve times, whatever you want. Um, you know, if you do, if you do have a lot of people, if you've been using Reserva for a while, like over a year, you will have people that have booked with you a fair number of times. So you can set the default. Uh, intake number our, our threshold so if I click here on add clients uh, I'm able to uh, let's see here actually I don't have any claimed accounts so I won't be able to do it so right now uh, it's not gonna work <laughs> but uh, basically if if those accounts that I or those bookings that I created um, were claimed accounts. So if I go back to the client list, um, you know, Dan had logged in on his own or Jimmy had logged in on his own or, or Jack had logged in on his own. Um, they would be imported in if they would booked at least once with, uh, with Des. But um, until the client makes the booking, really nobody will get added to your list. Um, but that's, that's, uh, that's a feature that we're still working on um, in terms of tweaking it, but uh, you know, right now it's uh, the account has to have an email address that's being activated, and that's how you you build the client uh, the uh, private client list for for your provider. So I'm just going to go back to uh, the providers list here and just touch on a few more or the last settings here. Um, you are able to disable waitlist by provider. So if you don't want to have people sign up for a waitlist with you, um, you can uh, you can turn it off. But by default, it's on for everybody. Um, you can have custom uh, time slots by provider. So you know, in Ian's case, say he has been cutting for a long time and he would prefer to do 20-minute cuts, um, you could set his time slot to be based on 20-minute increments so that his schedule works out really well um, for him. So, uh, but I'm just going to keep it at 30 for now. But actually, you know what? Maybe I will change it so you can actually see what it looks like on the schedule. So 
Ian's going to be offering 20 minute cuts now instead. So I'll hit save there. Um, you know, w with your status, you can set a custom uh, not available uh, statement. This will uh, allow you to. Um, this will allow you to like say like, oh, I'm going to be on vacation from September 20th to 25th, or um, you know, just like let people know about things when you're not around. Um, also, too, if you're ever to have a, a guest barber, this is a great way to manage that guest barber, so you can have a st uh, start and end date for them. Um, and then also on on status, um, some barbers, you know, they don't want to take uh, appointments, so you can actually set them to be available for walk-ins only. And in this case, what happens is uh, the uh, the barber can be seen in Reserva, their their availability, but um, the client can actually make a booking with them. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, you know, in terms of service options here, I am going to move uh, Ian to custom duration. So we will make him offer the 20 minute haircuts. Um, his shave is now, yeah, we'll make it like a, we'll make it a, we'll keep it at an hour because or actually, sorry, we'll move his uh, shave to 40 minutes and we're going to make his haircut and shave um, one hour. Um, we can also have custom costing for, for, for uh, Ian as well. So maybe, I don't know, he might offer it a slight discount, you know, but uh, again, if you, if you need to change the pricing for more senior barbers, uh, this is a great way to do that. And I can show you how you can go the other day, other way with an apprentice as well. Um, so again, uh, that's how you manage some of the, the detailed service options here. I will, I guess I can jump back here and you'll see now on, um, on the, uh, the schedule or on the uh, booking widget that um, the haircut does have a price fluctuation between 20 and 25 dollars and 20 minute increments. So for, um, let's see here, for Ian, you know, you can see he's working on the 20 minute increments now, which is super cool. You know, and he does the 20 minute haircuts. So um, yeah, that's taken care of. So we can even account for uh, sort of oddball or uh, you know, like slight differences in the way that, uh, I shouldn't say oddball, but um, slight differences in the way that people approach running the business um, or uh, how, how certain people work within your shop. Um, Cause you know, we do see that where there is, you know, a lot of shops are very modular in their approach where everybody's on 30 minute increments for haircuts. But then sometimes we see shops where half the staff are on 30 minute for cuts and then the other half are on 40 minute for cuts. So, you know, if, if you can change the time slots based on the prime service, um, there's a lot less opportunity for you to have gaps throughout the day. Um, and then after that, you know, we can do breaks. So again, you could do, um, you know, you could do a lunch, a lunch break for every uh, for everybody. So again, that's something you could set up, um, and you can start a start an end date for that break. Um, yeah, great, great little feature there. So this way, you can have a set time every day where nobody can book in uh, with you, so that you can actually grab a lunch, um, which can be a rare thing sometimes if you run a really busy business. Um, you know. Going the other end of things, you know, we do have Ben here being the apprentice. So I can, um, for his service options, I can give him more time. So, you know, he might need 45 minutes to do a haircut, but because he's an apprentice, um, he's super cheap there. Um, and uh, I'm actually gonna not let him offer shave, uh, shave or haircut and shave. And I'll show you how to do that now which you can just go to manage providers and you can see that everybody offers all services. So I'm going to turn this off for Ben and he's only going to offer the haircut now. So if I jump back into my incognito window here, which I haven't for a while because I've been going to Safari, um, you can see here the price now drops to 15 to $25. And uh, you know, you're basically 
uh, well, not basically, but you've got 20 to 45 minutes for your, your service duration range for the, the haircut. So if I go to view calendar and I try to find a day where Ben is booking, um, right now he's on half hour slots. I should probably change that to work on 45 minute slots because uh, it would work much better with his um, haircut experience or his haircut length. So I'm just gonna save that there and I'll reload this and I'll click on haircut and I'm gonna find um, a time that I can book in with Ben. And as you can see, he's got 45 minute slots now. So um, what does that look like on the schedule? Um, you can see here, uh, if I use the zoom in button, um, you can really see a difference on the hour where Ian now has three, three slots um, and everybody else is on, uh, uh, sorry, Des and Kathleen are on the uh, uh, 30 minute slots and Ben is now on 45 minute slots. So it looks, looks pretty cool. Um, you know, you can do stuff where you can move an appointment here. Um, so, you know, again, if Susan decided she wanted to come a little later, um, you can move her, move it for her. Um, if you click on the canceled link here, this would show you a listing of all the cancel, uh, canceled uh, appointments for the day. Tap on, tap off. This is just a way to just like manage if somebody needs, you know, time for like a dentist appointment um, or just wants to take a break. You know, uh, it wants to be a little less regimented and uh, when you're taking breaks, you can use a tap on, tap off feature to let your staff uh, manage, manage when they want to take breaks or not. Um, what else do we got? The rebook feature. So I could, you know, basically select Susan here and I'm able to go to a date in the future and I could book her in with Des down uh, on August the 24th. Um, so she'll have two appointments. So if I, if I do go back to the 21st, um, this is a great feature. You can use a checkout. So as a person paying you, you can be like, Hey Susan, when you want to come in next and you know she can say like oh i want to come in on the 24th because hey i like getting my hair cut every three days so you can actually do that when uh, a couple clicks and that's a great way to just let your clients always get a good time slot um just keep it uh keep things streamlined and keep your clients rewarded um who support you with uh first choice for uh, their next cut and, and generally in most shops, you know, if, if uh, you're looking at a couple weeks out or a few weeks out, there is a significant drop off. So, you know, they will have, uh, you know, usually their first or second choice you're able to accommodate with uh, for that. And when you do make that um, rebooking in, the person will get uh, a confirmation email as well. They'll get their uh, reminder sent to them too the day before at 1 p.m. And uh, what else do we got to cover in here um, that's, that's really pertinent to initial setup? Um, well, on the schedule page, um, we've released a new feature here that allows you to set uh, new schedules. So this is a great way to manage vacations. Um, you're able to select a week. So if uh, on the 18th, um, you know, let's say like, uh, that uh, both Ian and Kathleen have vacations that week for some reason. Um, you know, you could create, I could create uh, my new schedule and, you know, basically we're going to have uh, Ben work every day that week because he needs to cover uh, for Kathleen and, or sorry, we're not open on Sunday and uh, Des is going to work every day that week and uh, you know uh, I guess like Kathleen is going to take Monday through Thursday off but Ian's going to be off the whole week so once I click on go live um, I'll make that live and I can see that I've got a new schedule set for that week so we're going to have custom availability for that week which um, we basically manage that uh, vacation time 
for uh, two staff in a really efficient way. And uh, this is also a way you can manage uh, changes to the shop schedule too. So you're able to, as you can see here, if I click on uh, create new, I can create never ending and I'm able to, um, I can also copy the availability from the default schedule, but this way I could um, extend the shop hours. You know, this could be something where, you know, you might change the way the shop works because you've added two more barbers and they like to start early in the morning and then, you know, the rest of the barbers want to keep coming in at 10 a.m. Um, so you could actually make your hours eight to six, you know, most days of the week if, if that's something you wanted to do. Um, but again, this is a, just a really cool way to just um, be very flexible with your schedule management, but account for uh, account for really intricate schedule updates uh, in a really efficient way. Um, and the, as you can see here, I have my uh, my uh, default schedule here and the uh, schedule that will replace that schedule for the week of September 18th. And you know other things that you can look into as well. Um, we do have calendar sync, so you're able to sync your calendar both one and two ways to your your calendar of choice. We can sync with uh, Gmail, Google, uh, Google Suite, uh, iCloud, as well as uh, Outlook and Exchange and Yahoo as well. Um, kind of covering most everybody's uh, calendaring services of choice. Um, on the POS tip, we are integrated with Vand. I'm not going to cover that today, but I will be doing a, a video on how to uh, set up Vand so it works really well with Reserva. And the reason you would use Vand is to just manage your inventory, uh, both uh, uh, service-based inventory as well as uh, physical product inventory, and uh, you know things like gift cards and uh, also just point of sale uh, and you would be able to, to to track all your sales for services as well as physical products um, but that's that's something we can cover at a later date um, other than that we have our notifications area uh, this is where you can go in and you can just uh, you can add some custom text to your uh, confirmed booking so you know there may be like a price increase you want to make people aware of this is a great way to do that um, for canceled bookings, uh, you could be like, uh, you know, I don't even know what you want to put in there. Uh, and it's pretty good as it is, but, uh, you know, just be, you could even just say like, thanks for canceling, <laughs> um, uh, and giving us enough time to fill that space. I don't know. Uh, and then move booking again, you can also, uh, customize the text there. So you can just give a reason why the, the, the booking was moved and you know it could be because of sickness it could be because of uh you know that staff that staff person is no longer there um you know there, there are a variety of reasons of why why uh an appointment can be moved um which reminds me just jumping back to the schedule here um for edit day we are you are able to turn somebody off from from this page here um you can turn them off and if you do if there are bookings um, you can actually send a uh, cancellation booking to everybody who um, had a booking that day. So that's how you can use the edit day feature to either extend someone's hours, contract their hours, or turn them off for the whole day. Um, and then uh, let's see here, what else do we got under, under manage? Uh, the booking widget is your iframe widget that you can embed into your, uh, your website. So all you would have to do up here is authorize your website. Um, you're good to go. Uh, the background can be changed. You know, you can change your text color to whatever you want. Same thing with the buttons as well. And uh, you can just put in your, uh, your hex code there and you're off to the races. And uh, jumping back to the client area, um, you're able to create clients. So you can send them a welcome email. Um, again, on the client list, you can see here um, we do have Susan uh, is blocked. You know, we are we are listing people by most bookings right now. Uh, I'm gonna unblock Susan because she doesn't need to be blocked anymore. And uh, let's see here. 
Um, we're we're show, we're showing everything by most bookings at the moment, but uh, you know we can sort sort them alphabetically, um, ascending or descending, and uh, we can also uh, showcase by most recent bookings as well. Um, Susan has twenty one bookings because she's got uh, all those recurring bookings that I set up for her. Um, we also connect with Mailchimp, so two options here you can let your clients sign up um, to, to be added to your list every time they make an appointment there's a little field there they can check off to say add me to the mailing list and you can also do a batch import of all your active clients into MailChimp and they will be uh, asked to confirm if they want to be on your mail mailing list or not so you're compliant with anti-spam laws um, you know just on the analytics tip um, we do have the reporting which is really awesome. So here you can just get an overview of you know who's created all the bookings for me right now. It's all admin driven because I haven't had any clients book. Um, you know we're all after hours because it is uh, pretty late at night <laughs> while we're setting this up. Um, and uh, you know completed bookings uh, are just showing zero percent right now because none of the appointments have actually occurred and uh, you know there are the different tabs here so um, you know everything is now showing uh, days of the week uh, for the last 30 days last 90 days and uh, you know I can go through all, all, all of the details here um, you know just get it getting an insight into um, you know who's who's made the most bookings uh, on uh, on your uh, sorry, uh, who's made the most bookings in your account, and uh, uh, you know who your top performing clients are. Um, same thing with revenue here as well. Um, right now, it's all it's all haircut. Um, the revenue dollars uh, are uh, you know just show showcased here. Um, revenue by provider, um, which reminds me, if we just jump back to the schedule here. You can actually click on here to see your totals for the day. So Des has two haircuts, which uh, are, are 50 bucks. And uh, on the, um, you know, I can also just edit, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna edit his default split because I haven't put that in for, for him yet. Um, I'll also give him a quick bio. So you'll actually see the bio um, for the provider here. If I click on haircut, and uh, you can see Des here. This is a quick little bio. You know, you can say like, "Oh, I cut," or I don't know. I don't even know what you want to say. Put whatever you want. And uh, just jumping back here, just going back to the analytics um, on the reporting end of things, um, you can just see like services by provider. Um, you can also see uh, clients as well. You know, most everything here is showing next to nothing because uh, it's all future based um, because we don't have a lot of uh, old appointments to draw from. So that's why you're only seeing like one uh, for uh, the bookings because they they're the ones that occurred in the in the last day. Um, most of my other bookings have, have been done after the 12 a.m. switch. Um, but uh, another area in the analytics is the booking search where I can see my bookings for today, um, for tomorrow. I can do a custom date or I could go to the 21st. As you can see. Um, that's when we have our first round of serious bookings. I'm able to cancel them from here as well. Um, I can also get pretty advanced in my search so I could see like a, a range of appointments. So I could do a week. Um, you know, I could show like all the book canceled or no showed appointments for that week. Um, just to, like specify by service and provider. So again, if I go here, I can see uh, all the bookings from Monday to Friday. So Ben has two and Des has three. Um, and that's that's more or less it. Um, just the last thing to just touch on, I think, is is the wait list. So um, you know, you 
can see it here. I am able to add someone to the waitlist. So, um, you know, basically, if I were to uh, tap off all those days, so what day are we on? We're on the 21st. So, I'll just show you how this works real quick. So, once that's done, um, you know, I could add people to the waitlist, um, a haircut. I could add, uh, let's see, if I just search for Jack. So Jack is being added to the, my wait list now. Okay, so I'm just gonna do uh, uh, Park Dale Hair Academy plus Jack at gmail.com. Let's see here. Oh. That's just, uh, you know what I should do? I'm just going to add, uh, I can edit Jack's account because he hasn't been, uh, he hasn't been claimed yet. So I'm just going to save that in there. So now there is an email in there. And uh, when I go back to schedule, so we can see that Des is all filled up for the day. I can click on the waitlist, click on add to waitlist. It will search the clients. I'm gonna search Jack. I'm gonna add him in there. And, oh, sorry. I need to get the service on there. And I got Jack added to the list. So uh, what would happen here in the event of a cancellation, he would get, um, contacted a few minutes after that. So uh, you can see what the client sees here on the 21st. We can see that Des is fully booked and so it's gonna ask me to log in to add myself to the waitlist. And that's kinda how waitlists work. Well, that's not kinda how, that's how they work. Um, it's really, really simple um, sort of implementation from a user experience. Uh, a lot of it just works in the background, but there's pretty complex sort of uh, 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 programming that was involved to make it happen. But uh, the magic of this feature is it does so much with very little intervention on your end. Um, you know, we've had barbers who've had one of our shops, we were checking the stats and a uh, barber had 19 people on his wait list a couple months ago. and you know, the third person booked in um, after a cancellation a couple days before uh, the, it was a busy Friday that he, that he was filled up on. So it uh, just goes to show that you can't get some information out of, uh, out of your wait list. It will help you um, determine sort of if it's time to scale up. You know, if you start seeing that uh, your barber generally, you know, on a few days a week are having people sign up for the wait list, you can definitely handle adding another barber or two to your shop. Um, and that's, that's uh, you know, touching on that point there, I think that's really it. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot to take in. Um, there are going to be more questions, uh, obviously, and that's when you can get in contact with us um, during your trial at any point, just either hit us up. Uh, on our 1866 1866 656 3362. Um, if it's not critical or urgent, email is always great. Um, we're always always quick on the support emails there. So you can email us at uh, support at reserva.com and uh, you'll probably hear from me because I love answering travel tickets. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening. And uh, if there is anything else you want covered, um, or just want clarified, you can always hit us up in the comments on our YouTube page here, um, or you can always just get in contact with us through uh, just our support channels, um, which are generally email or uh, phone, um, or even on Instagram if you wanna hit us up there as well. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, hope you learned a lot, and uh, yeah, this is really how you can manage your day-to-day -day, uh, using Reserva and transition from whatever you're using right now to, to run your business or uh, basically change the way that things are done, which is 
you you run your business instead of your business running you right uh that's that's really what we've built here is a really powerful approachable tool that will help you uh maintain service excellence for every client that comes in so that uh you keep providing that great service every client that sits in your chair is going to be compelled to tell their friends about how awesome that experience was and just by nature of people talking and saying good things about your business, you're going to get busier. So that's really the goal, and that's the magic um, for for any business, right? The world does not need any more mediocre, uh, corny, cheesy businesses. The world needs businesses that are well run and provide excellent quality service. And um, by investing in Reserva and uh, collaborating with us, um, you can really step up uh, the consistency and level uh, service level experience that you offer every client that sits in your chair so that's it i'm going to stop rambling appreciate you watching and listening and thanks a lot okay take care have a good night or day or morning or whatever time it is that you're watching this